There was nearly 70,000 there for Spud's game, and the Saints were too good by 15 points. Our review for the game is for Drain Man, Drain Problems. Call the experts the Drain Man. The best analyst in football is alongside of me. Kingy, your observations of last night. Well, it's easy to see, isn't it, that it just doesn't mean enough to the Pies players anymore. It, it did in 2023. It did in 2022. Every minute of every game, the ball was as hot as hot. And they would close space and they would make it impossible for the opposition to, to function in real time. And it was awesome to watch. But in a lot of ways, teams have mapped out exactly what they're doing and now they're, they're comfortable with it. They're handling it. And, and I don't know if it's as big a win in 2024 as what we're talking about. Mm. I don't know if they're the same product anymore. Because I saw so many players not really buy into absolute team. And, and some of their better players, and we, and this is, we're not going to talk about the also rans because they're, they're not they're not really leading the way. The guys that are leading the way: Darcy Moore, Nick Dacos, Scott Pendlebury, Jack Crisp. Um, they're all off. They're all off. Still side bottom. I mean, there's so many of them of the top liners have just become six out of ten commodities this year. And, and it's alarming. It's shocking. I didn't think this was going to happen. There were no signs of this through the preseason, but they, they have fallen through the floor. I think you summed it up nicely. And you'd never – I mean, the, the word sort of soft is synonymous with AFL football. You, you, you're a bit soft. Now, I would never, ever, ever say that an AFL player is soft that crosses the white line, but they were timid. And, and that's about as big a criticism that you can have as a team. And you can go back and you can watch a significant number of edits where Collingwood players last night were jumpy and timid is probably the best two terms that, that I can put. They didn't really want to have contact last night. They didn't want to take the contact. They didn't want to take the heat. They felt the heat and they coughed up fundamentals. But we're talking fundamentals in the contest where they've been so strong. You won't win finals if you're not strong in the contest. And they couldn't handle the heat from the Saints. So it's not soft, but there's not the ability to sacrifice your body for the betterment of the team. And and you'll review it. And when you watch the tape again, that was their best play. Nick Dacos was timid last night. And I know it's that that's, that's a criticism that he probably hasn't caught much through 50 games. And it's really tough to single him out because he's been as consistent as anyone, but he was timid he, in the contest. He missed tackles. He fumbled and he was jumpy. Jordan Ngoi is jumpy. Still side bottom goes back with one hand instead of putting his full body there and, and that costs the goal. Darcy Moore is just missing the spoil because I don't think he genuinely wants to put it all on the line. And you mentioned have they been worked out and our team's working out what they're doing. Well, let, let's hear it from the horse's mouth because Ross Lyon essentially admitted that Collingwood would have been worked out. Well, of course they have. You get you get a sighter on on the the best in the competition. Everyone looks at the premier for for many different reasons. One is to to steal some of the components of what they do and use it for your own planning, and two is if you if you can't compete with them, well, you can't win the flag. So you've, you've got to assess how you get hold of these. Things. And and more often than not, it's it's just too hard because the the premiers have been doing their methodology for a little while and and they just do it better than you. But I think when you look at what, what Ross is talking about, he's talking about, I think, specifically the role of Jordan Dugowie. That wing line run, up and back, staying in corridor, and as often as they can, they give the ball to him and they slingshot forward, and he makes the right decision at the right time. He's the conductor. He's the one that flicks the handball out when it's a handball required, a kick inside 50 minutes, everything's to advantage, and he's maximum damage. This year, he's had 11 kicks, 11 kicks, and five kicks. Mm. He, he, his role has been has been stifled, and teams are putting time into Jordan to go like never before, and he and he hasn't been able to handle it, and their plan hasn't had another mode. So we saw him stand all alone in a prelim final at stoppage and have thirteen clearances and single handedly put his team into a grand final, and then they get GWS who was the team that they beat, and that allowed him to stay all alone at stoppage, and they don't give him any space, you know, not, none. And then Ross last night speaks about the role that Seb Ross did on him and closing that down. And 
Yeah, just 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 not as hungry now. These are their these are their best players. So these are the best, most decorated players. And and Craig McRae, it was a masterclass, I think, in in both media conferences. So if you you want to learn something about football, go and listen to Ross last night and, and what they did. It's just it's eight minutes of pure gold, mm. and it was a lesson in taking responsibility and ownership from Craig McRae, and he hasn't put a foot wrong. So he, he owned it. He says the fundamentals are off and it's their, their best players. You've mentioned Dugowie and, and the, the numbers are plain to see with Dugowie. Let, let's talk about more who you highlighted this week. You take an intercept mark and you handball it on the ground under no pressure, five metres away, and it costs you a guy. How deflating is, is that? Like, with Darcy Moore, he's off. He goes to spoil and misses the ball completely and memory's just there for an easy, um, you know, ground ball goal early on, deflating. Schultz, harsh because he's just a new player, but he's not the player he was at. Frio. I don't know. That's a bit of system and all that, but is he working as hard as what he was at Freeman? How's not the player? And and he's a year older, Jeremy Howe, and we get that. Pendlebury looks, to me, and it's not a big statement to say that you know, at some point Pendlebury's going to be finished. He looks finished to me. He he's looks going human. To ground. Yeah, we're going to ground, playing for free kicks, and he's done that a number of times. I think the first sign that your time is coming to an end is if you go to ground a lot, if you're not prepared to take contact and you're looking for a cheap free. And I'm seeing that with Scott at the moment. Nick Dacos was pretty good first two games. But he was terrible last night, so a bit harsh. Mason Cox does two good things a game and probably six horrible things a game, like some of the free kicks he gave away last night. Quainall's not the players. Oh, these are the players we're talking about. So he didn't want to name and shame, but we're happy to do it last night. And, and we give them their plaudits when they're outstanding, like they have been for two years, and we laud them. But when they're poor and they don't want to accept the contact and they can't handle the heat, that's what the fumbles are from. That's not fundamentals in a gym at training. Of course you do that. But it's fundamentals when you're under the pump and under the heat and they're not wanting to accept that contact at the moment. Yeah, couldn't agree. I throw Bobby Hill into that conversation Definitely. too. He, he, he panicked a couple of times. He should have taken a chest mark about 15 yards from goal. And, and they get you in bursts, the pies. And they've, they've done that over the last couple of years. They put four or five goals on them last night in a 15-minute window, effectively, in the game late first, or uh, I think it was, or – no, sorry, mid-second second, uh, term to close out uh, that, to half time. They really come with a rush, and they did the same thing start of the last – or mid-last quarter. But aside from that, St Kilda dominated this game. It mm-hmm. reads as 15 points, but it, it was it was felt like a six-goal victory in the end. I, modern footy has become about – being able to put your opponents to the sword in terms of punishing them when they make a mistake. Last season, uh, when Collingwood turned the ball over, I talk about strike rates. So per 100 turnovers, they, they paid a price of 62 points per 100 turnovers. This year, it's 96. <laughs> so it's a 50% drop-off. Now, you cannot compete. If you're going to bleed so easily like that and make it really tough on your backman to – They've been fighting 5v6 on occasion. Sometimes they fight 4v6. Four, four they, they're comfortable to live with that if you've got, if you've got numbers at the footy. That's their, that's their mode. But they're not winning any of the 4 on 6 or 5 on 6s anymore. And they're getting exposed out the back. I mean, some of that vision last night. We showed, we showed the one play where there were four Saints players charging back to the goal square that were the same four players that contested for the ball on the wing and they were unopposed by the time they got inside 50. So what happens to Quainor? What happens to Maynard? And we've lauded these guys, so yeah, and, and rightly yeah, so. Yeah. But it just doesn't it just doesn't mean the same anymore. It's an amazing competition, isn't it? That you can be so good and then in the space of a year you you're not and they're not they're not good. Then they're, they're a shadow of themselves. They've lost the uh, we keep talking about the oh they can come back and the miracle workers and we hear that in the comments. There's not there's none of that. Like, they're not coming back from these deficits like they were. So that's gone. That allure, that aura is the teams don't fear that anymore. They're down at ten points at three quarter time. Remember they always kick the first goal in the, the Grim last Reaper. Quarter. Yeah, it doesn't happen last they don't kick the first goal in the last quarter. The Saints do it. They didn't kick a goal from centre bounce. And I know it's not a big scoring area, but that's a strength of their not not one goal. They kick one point from centre bounce, and it's these yeah. young Saints players that are going. I see Owens going the ruck against Cox, and they they win the clear. I'm like, what what is going on? So, so can I flip that. it? Can I flip it? Yeah, I want to talk about the Saints. Yeah, you know, I was gonna I was gonna say we de- I definitely have to get to the Saints. The Saints were unbelievable. Oh, you know, I said at the start of the year, I think they're a better commodity than last you year, did. and it was you an argue, it, was, it became a bit of a testing uh, a really testy discussion between the two of us at the start of the year. 
And now you see it. Look, Wangane Miller is going to be a top liner in our competition. He's kicking. He'll bite off things that most players won't look at. I love the the acquisition of Henry. What he's done for this team already. I hope he's, I hope he's not uh, injured. I hope he hasn't done the hamstring. Windhager, we talked about in the preseason, had a huge preseason. Him and Owens had the biggest of preseasons. Now, does it mean that they play good footy? It doesn't. And maybe Windhager is a role player, but he played a bloody good role last night. Six centre bounce clearances is some sort of game. And when Rowan Marshall plays this sort of footy, and, and in fairness to him, he's been a pretty good player for the last couple of seasons. When he plays this level of footy in the ruck, he sets a standard for this group, and they, they march behind the big guy. 11 clearances last night for Owen Marshall, and, they, and, and that's what they, they speak. I'm not there yet to declare. I'm not a, a, with them yet, yet from you. Like, Get I'm on not, board, so, mate. I'm not, I'm Get not on suggesting board. they're what there yet. For? I, I just think... Um, what do you need to see? The, the, this coach gets the most out of the least. What so do you need I to see, though? I don't think there's a coach in the league that... Does more with less. I ne- so j- I just think they're three A grade players short. Three. Uh, yeah, I do. Um, and when it comes to the crunch, these are the star players that rip games away from you, big games. So I, I and I needed a scalp last night and I saw it, but I'm just not there yet. And I'm I'm a slow burn with the Saints, and I have been. So nah, I think you, I think you're better off going the other way on this okay, one. I think right. they got their, their centre half back fullback combo is really good. Wilkie and, and Battle, if you want to call him the fullback. Cordy, we've got to discuss it some other time, not not today, because we're talking, we're talking positively about the same. I think Wilson's going to be a top liner. Filippo's got to get his hands on the ball a bit more. He, he's, yeah. he's he's worrying me a fraction, but they got weapons down back. Sinclair and 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 Wangan and Miller are off half back. Brad Hill. Now I I like what they're doing. They're charging towards the finals, Cornsy. I see them totally different. Uh, Justin Longmuir re-signed for one extra year last week, and I think across the board criticised. For that, or the club was, anyway, and, and you and Jason Dunstan were quite strong on that, as were others. Yesterday, Matthew Nix has re-signed for an extra two years, and there was nothing other than pretty good stuff, like good good stuff for Nixie. So some of the some of the numbers are the average age of Fremantle is younger than Adelaide, twenty three point nine. Average games is less, not by a whole lot, but just they're a little bit younger and, and less experienced than Adelaide. His record is fifty percent. He's won a final and he started the season 1-0 and zero in 2024. This is Longmuir. Nick's his record's 34%, hasn't been to the finals, and he started 0-1 and one this year. Why do, you, why do you think that is? Why are the differing views on Adelaide have done the right thing, largely across the board, whereas Fremantle did the wrong thing? So, so where do you sit with Nick's? Tell, I tell don't me. think they needed to re-sign him yet. I just think, I think clubs do it far too often. I think they jump early. I would have been comfortable for Adelaide to sit and say, we'll assess this at the halfway point of the year and have some more information um, on that. I just don't think he's done enough at 34.5% for them to need to extend him essentially by... So he's got three years at Adelaide. I think it's premature. No one's going to poach Matthew Nix yet. Just well, have some more information. Have some more information. Uh, yeah, halfway point of the year. picked up a club in crisis, up yeah. absolutely on their knees. So you're going to hold him to a percentage... Win loss percentage going into that role at that stage. No, I'm just comparing the different reaction to both when Longmuir's record is better. But and of course, it's better. Their list demographic is pretty much the same. He's lost some big players, Longmuir. Now, whether that's his no. fault yeah, but or they've, not, they've, they've, he had three years of a rebuild before he started that job. They had three drafts before Long uh, Longmuir went in, and, and he's been there. In, he's now in his fifth year. So they've done an eight year rebuild. Nick's Nick's hasn't had that luxury. He Nick's hasn't. Is, he picked up a club in crisis post the camp saga. Yeah, oh. I, I, I don't know. So you're fully confident that, that Matthew Nix is the guy and that they needed to re-sign him now. Well, I mean, they've got some good players coming now. They've recruited well. They've had access to the top end of the draft. They've still got some senior experienced players there in Smith and Laird and Walker and Dawson and, and O'Brien and others. I think just to the reaction of it, should be pretty similar to Longmuir. And and Free only went one year. Adelaide have gone two, so it's harder to get out of that than it is for Freeman. Oh, I'm just wanted to have that discussion with you and whether we've been hard on Frio and have let Adelaide off the hook for the decision that they've made right now. So I'm only talking about the game, right? I'm only talking about watching football and watching what teams are doing. I can see what Adelaide do. I think they're very hard to move the ball against in the main. And I think they're they're a ball movement team. 
So I think they're playing what the game now demands. They don't protect the scoreboard by chip marking and, and playing a false brand of football. I can't say that for the other team. I can't say that for Fremantle. And people say, oh, you're too hard on me, too hard on me. I'm just talking about what happens in-game. Now, fantastic what happened last week. Terrific. Got the job done against uh, against Brisbane with, without a locky knee and all that. You can make all those discussions. But if you want to compare coach to coach, I can see it with Nick's. I haven't seen it with Longmuir. So is I, it win loss though? Isn't it? Isn't it, when it boils down to it? Isn't it win loss? Not every year. I however mean, however you get there, who cares? However you get there, but don't, as long as it's win, win win loss and. But uh, but they're coming through different phases, aren't they? Isn't it isn't it relevant to what phase your club but, is but, at? But, but but I think the phase that they're at is that Frio's average age is less, and they're le- they're less experienced, and they've lost some big players. They've lost some key players that have departed the footy club. Now they're stacked in the draft. Now I'm not defend I'm not defending either because I'm I'm just, I, I'm just largely talking about the media reaction yeah. to both stories, and I just think mate, mate, perhaps we've been a bit harsh on Fremantle, and we've let Adelaide off the hook for this decision. Well, for, I, I think the last three years of Ross, so they, they went zero ten. I think it was in 2016. Would that be right? 16, 17, 18. And then uh, what's Longmuir now? Five years. So he's tw- he's in twenty nineteen. So it might be sixteen, seventeen, eighteen were, were the three years of rebuild uh, at the end of those seasons, and then and then into this next phase. Were they gone ten, fifteen, ten the last three years? Yeah. So they've gone ten. Are you happy with that? Are you thirteen th- and win a final in in twenty twenty two. But comparing it to Adelaide, it's it's more impressive. Now you're staying is starting from a, a better base. I get that, um, but will we look back at the halfway point if things don't go to plan for Adelaide and go, gee, they, they jumped in a li- just a little bit early with yeah. Nick? So we sure that he's the guy for the next couple of years after this? One three hundred. I'm sure. Seven three six seven three six. Kingy, you quickly got something. Um, hey, margins matter. Margins matter. And, and I'm putting these guys in the gun. The the guys that are playing down back for the West Coast at the moment are, are in the gun. There is no doubt about that. McGovern, um, Barras, Barras. They, they conceded 25 marks inside 50 last week against the Port Adelaide Football Club, and got rolled by 50 points. Should have been should, could have been 80 points. 16 goals, 24. They're up against the all-conquering GWS. Oh, I think who are the best team in the competition right now. Ball movement slick. I'll put them in the gun. You've got to be better with their individual matchups against the key post forwards of the GWS Giants this week because margins matter. Last year that they were, what was, uh, they lost sixteen games. Oh, sorry, eleven games by north of fifty points. Five games mm-hmm. by north of hundred. If they get this wrong again this week, those key backs, they'll concede twenty-five goals. I think last week you and I were taken to the uh, cleaners by Nathan Buckley referring to the Justin Longmuir discussion. And I just heard something during the week that I think is worth playing. I don't know if we character assassinated uh, Justin, but let's just have a listen to Nathan Fife on the in-house uh, Fremantle feed. I think the game now is embracing chaos a lot more. So the stop, start, control, ball use that we got used to over the last five or six years. I think we're moving away from that a bit and all teams are embracing this chaotic, rolling, flowing, exciting game. I reckon that was about four years ago. (laughs) I I reckon the game became chaotic four years ago. That was a this, nice that, walk, walk, walk and talk from uh, Fifey on the beach. It yeah. was a paid, paid commercial for a cryptocurrency thing. But uh, This is my good, point. Good pickup. But this is my point. This is what I keep saying. And I'm only talking about what is happening on the field. The, 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 the game evolved when Richmond took it, what, in 2017? To, to a chaotic brand. And every other team has jumped on board since. We've seen... We've seen this season and last season Collingwood go to new levels. We've seen GWS in the last three weeks go crazy. So I, I, I want to throw it back. I want to. I think the most disrespectful thing you can do in the media, if you're going to comment on someone's livelihood, is not watch the games. So I, I'm 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 going to return serve here, right? To all, to all, because we cop it from everywhere. If you're not watching the games, and I'm not talking watching six of nine or seven of nine, if you're not watching nine of nine, don't comment on the games you don't watch or or declare that you haven't watched it because it's the only industry I know where you can talk about something you haven't seen. A declaration. Um, if if no, no, I'm going to ask for assistance too. If people out there hear of someone just making a generic comment that you know 
that they haven't watched because people know their teams better than anyone. The fans do. Flick us a message, hit us on Twitter or wherever you, you want to come at us and call it out. I'm going to put it on the fireball radar. If you haven't watched the game, don't comment on someone's job. What? In terms of the the presence, I, I and and I Bucks we were going to have that discussion. It was sort of late in the, in the program. I, I've been critical of of Justin for lacking a presence and lacking action, and that's just an observation that I have. I think the best coaches have an aura about them and their ability to inspire. There's still got to be something. I know the game's evolved and it changed all the time, but there's something about your character. You have an ability to inspire and urge your team on. I saw him last year move to the interchange bench and he was sitting at the back and he wasn't engaging these players. I thought, what are you what are you doing there on the bench? Now he's back in the box. There's some other coaches that don't I don't think quite have that presence where there's others that if they walk into a room that instantly you can see it and you're drawn to it. Um, you know, Longmuir Longmire has that. Uh, definitely Scott has that. Ross Lyon has that. The greatest Clarkson has that, you know. Like so, I, I think that's a fair criticism. Now, whether you can get that, I, I don't know. You, you probably can't. But that was been my observations uh, of of Justin, and and I, I probably still stand by that. Can I just put on the agenda quickly? Who plays on Jeremy Cameron, and is it going to be a big night for Jeremy Cameron tonight? I'm looking at Adelaide's defence. And it's a big job for Max Michelini. I mean, he's impressive, but it's his second year. And Jeremy Cameron's going to get up the ground. He's going to get back. He looks sharp. He looks fit. He looks hardened. So it could be a huge night on the agenda for Jeremy Cameron. Because Butts goes to Hawkins. That's a a good matchup. That works. Then I'm looking. Tell me if Jeremy Cameron's not right now probably looking at some farming information on YouTube going, Josh Worrell, (laughs) Mark Keane. Or Max Michelini. You're hot, you're hot on the crows tonight, aren't you? Well, I just I'm I feel not like worried you're about, putting him in the gun. I'm worried about their defence. I'm yeah. worried about their defence. I'm also questioning why Chris Burgess still hot held his spot with Taylor Walker back into the side. They 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 look. I've tipped them to win tonight at home. They're a different proposition, but there's a couple of concerns I would have thought. And one of those, the biggest one, is who plays on Jeremy Cameron. I can't see it. What else is on your... Uh... Oh, can I do a quick one before I go to Pete Murray? Yeah. The Western Bulldogs have got, I reckon, half a dozen of the same player in their team. <laughs> They've got six Leith Vandermeers. <laughs> They've actually got Leith Vandermeer. Lockie McNeil's the same player. Riley yeah. West, same player. Harvey Gallagher, tracking that way. Oscar Baker, oh, Caleb Poulter. Oh, oh, look. They, they just need someone to grab hold of that ground level game in their Ford 50. I don't know who it is, but I'll, t- I'll tell you what, there's some sameness about those smalls in their forward line. Anyway, that's just a bugbear of mine. All right, you're going to go, mu- go music with us tonight. I thought the Saints did a great job last night in, in the, the celebration of uh, and the legacy of Danny Frawley. Just, I just want to play a little bit of Pete Murray because I thought he nailed it last night. Seen better days on my face and my hands. Down on my knees and I pray to God, who can see me through to the end. Did you uh, did you get involved? Did you find oh, oh, yourself singing? It g- g- gives me tingles down down my spine. Now, is there a greater talent that you can have in life to grab a guitar? Mm. To stand in the middle of a football oval and sing and make it sound that good. So if there's any musos out there, I don't have one musical bone in my body, but I'm so jealous of your talent to be able to do that. And that was brilliant. I'm glad you brought it up. And can I put on the agenda that I was wrong, Kingy? Oh, hang saying on. saying it. I was wrong. Last night on Sports Day, I was reading the story in the Herald Sun that said it essentially cost the Saints hundred grand to move the game from Marvel to the MCG because they want to make this game a blockbuster. So they sacrificed 100 grand, and they've moved it to a ground that I thought they were less likely to win on, because Collingwood, we know, is so successful at the MCG. Saints are a better team at Marvel, and they've moved it, and it cost them 100. I was like, why would you do it? I know it's a big game, Spud's game, you want to build it, but it's about wins and losses, and you're less likely to win. I was wrong, and this game's going to be huge. Oh. And we've got some big fixtures in, in the AF. This is going to be as good as any of them, so well done. And I was wrong to, cool. to the Saints out there. Why did it cost them a hundred grand? They, they, I, they've, a, got, they've got seventy thousand people to, to to the venue. Isn't it, isn't moving the game because we can house more people reason enough? 
I would have thought I will. I haven't forensically analysed the numbers, but I'm taking. I think it was Sam Landsberger's column that said it was a hundred thousand yeah. break-even cost to move that game. Uh, he he would have the numbers in front of him, but I thought so. It's cost you a hundred, and you're less likely to win. And the Saints have taken games to Cairns. They've gone to New Zealand. They've gone to Shanghai, and they never win. They sell home games like. Why would you do that? You cost yourself a win. So last night, I was like, oh, here we go again. The Saints had never won a Spuds game, but well done to them. This is going to be a big fixture, a really big yeah. fixture for the footy club. I like it. And did yeah. you give me an answer on whether the Pies are making the eight or not? Um, they will make the eight. They'll make the eight. Pies will make the eight. Okay. Right Happy with that? Down. Just writing it down. All right.